Hi, I'm Megan McKay, and I'm a YouTuber from Toronto. Um, I started making videos when I graduated um, from Ryerson, uh, just because I knew I wanted to work in this industry, and I knew it was going to be maybe a bit harder to get people to read like a 30-page script than it was to just send a three-minute video and sort of prove to people that I'm funny and that I like to do what I do and I want to be able to do it someday kind of thing, if that makes any sense. So I started doing it more like a portfolio kind of thing um, to get into traditional media and it just sort of grew from there, um, especially when I started doing makeup tutorials and stuff like that. Um, and they sort of came about because I love makeup tutorials on YouTube and I use them in real life to put on my makeup for real. Um, and as a comedian, I kind of wanted to see if I could marry something that I really love already, like as part of the medium, with my kind of comedy. And that's how they sort of came about. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly not the first person to ever do a parody makeup tutorial, um, so they must have already existed in the space for them to sort of come and find me. Um, and I, I just think it's so cool that they did and that I get to talk to these people every week because they're fantastic. <laughs> I mean, my content is so feminist, like it's super, super feminist. Um, and that's a conscious decision on my part because it's something I want to talk about. It's something that's really important to me. Um, and I think my philosophy in creating content is just to talk about what's important to you and like try and make the best video you can. And the people that are interested in that kind of thing will eventually find you and eventually you'll make that connection. Um, and that's sort of how I approach the community and approach that sort of that sort of topic. Um, and I think uh, we're in a really cool space in the internet kind of zone right now where there are a lot of young women who are discovering feminism and want to talk about it and want to learn more and want to engage in conversations with other people about what matters to them. So I think it's it's just a case of like right place, right time and me being into the same stuff that these other girls are into as well and us connecting on that commonality. Um, I think the most important thing to me audience gets for me is that I really uh, value them and value their time and I'm focused on making the best possible video that I can every single week so that I'm not just sort of like you know this is a, a big deal for me that they are coming to watch my videos every single week and they want to sort of watch what I'm putting out like that's mind-blowing to me and I don't ever want to take advantage of that so I want my audience to constantly be aware of how much like I respect them and how important they are to me because that's just how it is, that's the truth. <laughs> I think uh, I, a lot of my feminist education came from Tumblr, actually. There's a huge community of Tumblr feminists who are just so smart and well-spoken and put things in such a way that's so easily digestible and makes so much sense to someone who's kind of new to that kind of way of thinking. Um, and so just living in that space and like going on Tumblr recreationally and reading those posts, really sort of gave me an education and inspired me to produce content in a way that worked for me, which was making videos, um, to give back and to sort of add to the conversation in a way that I hope is valuable. <laughs> um, that's sort of how it came about. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I, I just try to put myself out there and be, I like to be completely myself on, on these videos and sort of be like, this is how I saw it, this is how I, you know, like, some videos where I'm like struggling to like put on spanks, like it's embarrassing stuff, but every, not everyone's, a lot of people go through that kind of thing. Um, and it's again that sort of like, um, willingness to be vulnerable, willingness to be like, this is how things are going for me right now. Um, and I think people can sense that vulnerability and that realness and that honesty and connect with it on a, on a real level because it's something that you both sort of share. Um, so I, I really think like from a YouTuber's perspective to sort of generate and generate relatability and be like a relatable personality, you kind of have to put yourself out there and be like, hopefully someone will relate to this hot mess. <laughs> I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. <laughs> to the people who are coming
coming to your channel adds that layer of connection because it's sort of um, it's an indicator that you're you're kind of just being yourself like this is just who you are and you're just talking to the camera like you would another person um, who you're seeing you know uh, out, out and about or like it's kind of weird for me to be like just another person I'd see in my bedroom but like you know what I mean like someone you just see in that kind of situation or in a regular social situation you're just talking to the camera the exact same way you would talk to them um, and I think that's a, a like I said a cue that you're being honest and that you're just being yourself and that this is just your personality kind of thing. I mean, if someone comments on my video every single week and they follow me on Twitter and they talk to me there and they talk to me on Facebook, like, I sort of, you get to remember names and faces and you sort of get to know that person really, really well. Well, as well as you can on the internet, which I think is better than most people think it is. Um, in terms of, like, questions and advice and stuff like that, if it's something really serious or something that I think requires medical intervention or um, something of that nature, I try and sort of direct people to the resource that's appropriate um, for that particular problem just because I, I don't have any medical education. I don't, I'm not equipped to help certain issues, but I am more than happy to like try and connect people to other people that can help and do good. Um, if it's just like a, a, an opinion question or like a, an advice question that's like a bit more benign and a bit benign in the sense that it's not life threatening. Um, I feel way more comfortable just like having a conversation, having like a girl talk or whatever you want to call it, um, person talk <laughs> um, with whoever contacts me. Um, just because it's, you know, if they just want like my general opinion or something like that, I'm, I'm more comfortable giving it. Um, in terms of tracking that kind of interaction, it really is like just remembering who's who and being like, I remember you from here and here and like we've had this conversation and just sort of, um, it's, it is like, it's like meeting a bunch of people at a party and, and remembering faces and names in the same way for me, um, where I'm like, okay, I talked to you a month ago about this and I remember that, um, and I know you remember what we talked about for sure, so like, it's my job to make sure I remember that and keep that relationship uh, going and real and honest. It's, it's basically like um, being a person, but like, on a, on like, a, like being a social person, but on like a grander scale and on a more complicated scale because as soon as someone chooses like changing their uh, avatar, I get a, a little confused and it requires a bit of back um, on my part. <laughs> um, I think it, I think we're, we're in a space where it's, things have really changed and we're really taking uh, female comedians more seriously than we did even five years ago. Um, I think women have proved again and again that, you know, being a comedian doesn't like being a female and being a comedian doesn't mean you're you're gonna be like harder to sell or anything like that. Um, I mean, even like like super recently, if we look at like a movie like Pitch Perfect Two, like crushed the box office, like decimated everything else out there, and that's a movie uh, written by a woman, directed by a woman, and uh, starring a group of hilarious, hilarious women. Um, and I think it's it's easier to be taken seriously because all these other women have come before us and sort of proven time and time again that. Women can be funny, and women are good at being funny professionally. Um, personally, if I ever encounter someone who's like, women aren't funny, I'm just like, well, I don't care what you say. Just go away. <laughs> you just kind of have to be like that. Um, and you can sort of, if someone seems like they're just saying it from a place of ignorance versus a place of hatred, I think there's room to be like, hey, this is why you're, you know, what you're saying is kind of bad. Um, but if someone's just saying it because they like hate women and like will never believe that a woman is funny, the best thing I find to do is to just walk away and not engage. Um, it really is evaluating the situation from person to person. Um, I don't know if it's unique, but I think um, I make a conscious effort to really um, I, I really care about my audience and I really care about them hanging around and like talking to them and like maintaining that relationship and I think um, the most successful YouTubers um, have an element of that going on. I think um, the general public doesn't like being spoken down to, they don't like being pandered to and they don't like being taken advantage of um, and I think when you're in a position like you're a YouTuber, like it's, you're self-employed, like you're making, you're calling all the shots creatively pretty much. It's 
it's your job to make sure that you're always aware that your audience's time and attention and love um, and support is very valuable. It is the most valuable thing you have in this game. Um, and it's so important to like genuinely care about not wasting their time or testing their patience or pissing them off because the only reason you're in this position where you're able to do this and to do it, um, I'm not doing it 100% full time, but like 75% time um, is is because they're they're around and they're, they're supporting you and they care about you. So you have to care back, or else you're just a, a jerk. <laughs> I think in that particular scenario, because you're you become this YouTube personality, um, you sort of become a part of the medium, um, which. You know, you, you sort of like, people go onto YouTube to watch personalities. It's very much like, it's it's almost this sort of seamless um, relationship where it's like, it's you, you just become a part of what people expect to see on YouTube. I try and, uh, I mean, the medium is the message to me means that uh, when people come to YouTube, they're going to want to see content that they would expect to see on YouTube. Um, so it would, it would be very strange for me to watch like a feature film in like nine parts on YouTube. It would just be like a strange thing for me to do. I mean, I've done it before because I've wanted to see a movie and it's been on YouTube, but um, it really is like, the way I approached it was, you know, people come to YouTube to see like unboxings, to see makeup tutorials, to see um, how to's, to see like recipes being uh, uh, made. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the word made there and just stirred an air pod for a bit. Um, but that's what people go to YouTube to expect to see. So as a comedian, if I'm working in like a parody of the medium space, I kind of need to look at what exists on YouTube already and internalize that and sort of um, borrow those formats and make fun of those formats while I'm making fun of whatever the content is that week kind of thing. Um, because that's what people sort of expect to see on YouTube.